Okay, let's get a look at the with the weather picture for the day ahead. Uh, what have you got, Lucy? It's feeling more like autumn rather than August. I hate to say it, but I think the weather really has flipped this week. There's showers, there's longer pulses of rain. I think you're better off indoors rather than out as the week goes on. Uh, OK, uh, we've, we've covered a lot of subjects uh, this morning. Uh, so far, what are people saying, Charlotte? Well, we've had uh, a big reaction, actually, to this cutlery at cricket games ah. that we were just talking about. Yeah. A couple got ticked off because they had metal cutlery at a cricket game and it was confiscated. Uh, Denise has got in touch from South Africa and she says, what's the big fuss? Here in South Africa, we've not been allowed to take cutlery to cricket and we accept it and don't moan and groan. She says, stop whinging and worry about more important things. But John in Islamabad says... Um, can't take cutlery with a picnic to a cricket match. The ECB should be given a wooden spoon for their very handling nice. of yes, it. Yes, very, very funny. Mm. But then there was that... Very, uh, very funny. There was that tennis player who was stabbed in the... Uh, by, yes, by a bread knife. That mm. was Monica Sellers. She was yes. stabbed in the back by a bread knife. But he was a crazed fan. You don't mm. really get many of those mm. at cricket. Mm, well. Maybe you shouldn't tempt fate. Maybe you should just stick with the plastic cutlery. Uh, what are people saying about uh, David Beckham? Uh, not very happy about the way it was done. Larry in Zimbabwe says that Capello scored another goal. He said you'd own goal, an own goal, to Charlotte. speak to him before. Oh, you're right. You are right. Yes. Thanks, David. <laughs> that made a lot more sense. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get the idea. It's an own goal. Uh, that'll be two of them then. Thank you very much indeed. We'll take a break there. All the top stories in the morning, including more on the way David was told it's all over. And tonight looks like a good night for star spotters. Clear skies means that we'll get our best view of the annual Perseid meteor shower for years. Scientists say 11 p.m. will be the peak time to see the shooting stars. They are caused by the Earth passing through particles shed by the Swift Tuttle comet. All eyes no law, no law. heavenwards this evening. <laughs> <laughs> and will yours be? Well, I'll probably be asleep at that time, actually. <laughs> I'll tell you what it was I'll like. You can do, yeah. Well, James Wales got an opinion on David Beckham, which he'll give you in his newspaper preview very shortly after Charlotte with a rundown of what else is happening. Thank you, Eamon. Thousands of airline passengers will find out later today if their travel plans are to be disrupted. Firefighters, engineers... Well, shooting star of our own in the studio, Mr James Whale from LBC's <laughs> Drive Time. Yeah. Thank you very uh, much morning. indeed. Lovely to be here this early in the morning. Um, Charlotte's getting very... What is it with that pen? That one I got Sorry, from you last week, I, could I got see lots you. for. Looking at me as I was flicking it round. I thought you were going to drop habit, it. Very nervous habit. Um, okay, here's a, here's a, here's the thing. There are more jobs being snapped up, uh, and most have gone to immigrants. This is a story. I don't think it has any real f substance, and it's in practically all the papers today. Apparently, we've uh, we've got a lot less jobs because uh, migrants come to this country now. Obviously, we are a small country. We don't have a lot of space, and we have to restrict, I think, the amount of people who come here. But you know. The biggest problem is a lot of us in this country don't want to do some of the jobs people from other countries come here to do. That's a big problem. A lot of jobs we just don't want to bother with. And so if... you, you think a lot of Britons would prefer to claim handouts rather than uh, take those jobs? I mean, it is front page headline. Well, there. Front pages. So this, uh, this one's in the Star. It's in the. It's in all of them. Yeah, I, th I think you'll find foreigners get 77 percent of the jobs. I've been looking through for the proof of that, and I can't find it. But there are jobs that, that, that British people don't want to do. But, and, then, uh, but then these politicians will say, oh, this um, you know, reinvigorates the workforce and whatever, and it's very good. Surely somebody somewhere has to got to look at the common sense of this and say, look, those who are here, get out there, get the jobs that are available. And a lot of people do genuinely want to work But that's what we're going to gonna do. Well. I mean, that's what's going to happen, uh, hopefully, under this new coalition government. If they get their fingers out, that's what they're going to do. People are going to have to take the jobs that are there before they can do anything else. But then again, people like the fruit growers will say that there's an attitude difference as well, that, um, yeah. that they notice that, yeah. you know, the people coming from abroad are keen to do the work and they'll get on and work what hard. About if students? you force someone to do that job, then... What but when, when I was young, that's the sort of thing you would have done. Where's the Students appetite? Students are busy it? drinking. What are you well, talking well, about? They're out there in the streets having a few drinks. And that's a very good point you bring up. There would be nobody picking the fruit and vegetables in this country if it wasn't for migrant workers. OK. okay. Uh, Tony Blair, he's on a book signing uh, tour at the moment. Would you buy his book? Would you want it signed? I wouldn't want it signed. I wouldn't want to have anything to do with Tony Blair. I think he should be ashamed of himself and to actually inflict himself on the British public anymore. Why? I think, well, because of everything he's done to this country and everything he's done to the world. And he's sitting there smugly signing copies of his autobiography. Your I main objection like... is war. Well, the, the way he took us into Iraq, the way he didn't stand up to uh, Bush, the way he kind of glibly said in 1997, we're going to have a real change, left this country in the worst state it's been in in my 
in my lifetime and uh, a lot of other people's lifetimes, and now it's got to be it's got to be sorted out. Lots of people in this country are going to have to suffer, and he's sitting there on a four and a half million pound book deal, uh, smugly signing copies of his book here in the uh, capital next next week. Who I tell you what. Email and tell us if you want a, a copy of his book. So who's going to read his book? I won't. Okay. I'm not interested. Well, are you? If you are, I'm interested in all political opinions. Of course, I, I am. I, I, I do. I, as a matter of yes. fact, I'm more likely to read uh, biographies and autobiographies than than. And let's than be fiction. honest. If you got it signed, you'd have it straight on eBay, wouldn't you? No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Um, let us know <laughs> if you want a copy of his book signed. Newsandsky.com. <laughs> please let us I know. I will get you one. Uh, clone. <laughs> It <laughs> doesn't worry you. Now we've got the front page of the Daily Mail. Uh, first, um, first milk, then beef, and now veal. I don't. What is the problem with cloned meat? I mean, as long You'll as you'll probably it... find out in about ten years' time. Well, I don't think That's so. The thing, it hasn't been officially given the go-ahead in this country, so it's it shouldn't been... be sneaking in under the radar. Well, I don't know that. I well, it shouldn't be if we don't agree with it. But I don't know what everybody's getting so upset about. It's cloned meat, okay? It's exactly the same as the meat that got passed. If it's cloned, it's okay in other countries. I just think. Obviously, we're in the time when there's not a lot of news, apparently, so that's a front-page story. Who cares? Okay. As long as it's healthy... But I wouldn't want to eat it. You probably eat it and you don't know about it. Why wouldn't you want to eat it? Because I don't. Because it hasn't been officially passed and I don't think that there's been enough scientific evidence to prove that there isn't any consequence of eating it. Really? Do you eat it? Of course, so you probably eat it anyway. You probably eat it. I wouldn't worry about it. David honestly. Beckham, what's your opinion on what's happening? Yeah, there? yeah. You, listen, I did this for you because I knew you would want me to talk about David Beckham. Lovely tattoos, lovely tattoos. And is he going to leave his skin? I wonder when he eventually goes. Um, I actually couldn't care less. I don't see that it's such. I'm not that interested in football. But having said that, I am impressed with David Beckham. Yes. All right. And, and when he plays his last game, I will watch it because I'll be interested because he's a personality and I think he's done quite a lot for this country. I think he's a nice guy. He seems... I've never yeah, met him, but I think he seems a nice, nice guy. guy yeah. um, but I'm not really interested in football, so why this is front page, I've no idea. But I think when he actually turned his life around... Remember when he committed that yes. foul and he became the most hated man in the country? Yeah. You won't remember that, but it, you, we do. Mm -hmm. And then he turned his, his, his life around. It just goes to show what you can do, doesn't it? So, well done for him. It does, OK. It's just a pity that um, it was announced in this way. I think yeah, people are it's saying, it's like you know, your boss going on air and saying, oh, you know, James isn't going to be doing the radio show anymore. But that's, that, Don't think that, that hasn't happened. Either. Yes, <laughs> I, th I think it's a demonstration really of how awful yeah. bosses are generally. How they just, yeah. you know, how they deal with the workforce. Not. I want to finish here on. Um, I want to talk about breastfeeding and women breastfeeding in public. Tell us this story, James. Okay, this is a story about uh, a woman. She's a nurse, actually. She got on a bus, a uh, stagecoach bus, uh, breastfeeding her 22-month-old baby. I think six months. I can't remember. Um, and you've got the only copy of the paper. But I, uh, I can't understand why anybody objects to a woman doing what is natural, breastfeeding in public. She was breastfeeding her baby. The bus driver would not let her get on the bus. Six weeks old as Six a baby. Six weeks old. Throw, throw her off the bus and she had to walk a mile home. I think that is appalling. And, you know, it does happen from time to time. I, 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 I remember being out with my wife and she was asked uh, if she could go into a toilet to breastfeed our son. Now, who wants to go and eat their food in a toilet? What is wrong with some people? And, you know, quite often it's women that complain. Yeah, this is very true, and I think there's a dilemma for a lot of women because they're told by doctors and medics throughout their pregnancy that breast is best, and then they have to find time to, to do that. But there is no doubt that with a lot of people, uh, it is it is embarrassing socially. What's your view on that, Sean? Well, I don't think it should be. It's, it's a natural function. It's just one of those things that if a mother's breastfeeding and she has to feed at a certain time, then I, I don't see what the fuss is about. No, I'm with Charlotte. Mm -hmm. You know, it's only people's own insecurities, isn't it? Yeah. And to, to okay. actually start uh, inflicting that and to make, a, make a, a woman who has got a very small child get off a bus and walk home. Yeah, that's that is good. appalling. By all accounts, motherhood is difficult as enough it is without yeah. having barricades okay, like that. Okay, so you're not way. in favour of that. Uh, James Will, thank you very much indeed for that uh, romp through the newspapers um, today. Um, the views of James Will are not necessarily those of Sky News, of course. Um, and you can <laughs> contradict them if you want. <laughs> quite frequently aren't. Quite well, we would like really? to. The trouble is, the yeah. trouble is when you come on. 
the majority of people think you're brilliant, actually. Oh, they think that's embarrassing, that. isn't it? I hide it? all the emails that say that James Whale for Prime yeah. Minister. He doesn't know yeah, about Yeah, no, she ones. usually shows me all the ones that say, get him off. Yeah. What is he talking about? And by the way, that one from, from South Africa saying, why make a fuss? Well, because we like to use proper cutlery in this country. That's why not plastic. It may be okay in South Africa. It's not okay here. Yes, that's it. That's cutlery, proper cutlery at cricket matches. Yeah. So that's another story for another day. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. James Whale. Top story. <laughs> good morning. Good to see you. Sky News Sunrise. That's to do with Jacqueline Biltrow, who's here entertaining us with stories uh, today. And uh, we're going to talk gorillas now. Now, this will interest you, Charlotte, will it not? Yes, yes it does but, interest me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are amazing pictures which Cute. we're going to get in now from Rwanda. Emma Heard has been out there because. Gosh, it's just amazing how human like. They are. They're spookily human. Yeah, like. spookily. I'm not sure I would fancy getting too close the way Emma did there, but. Um, They're amazing creatures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fascinating. Um, right, um, we're going to have the sports rundown now with uh, Jackie, and then you've got reaction to this David Beckham situation. Loads of tweets this morning. Thank you for those uh, about David.